Good morning. It's good to be with you again. It's Sunday, March 23rd, and I'm glad you joined me this morning. Uh, I want to share with you uh, a little bit from God's Word and uh, hope that it encourages and strengthens and, and builds you up. And I thank all of you that uh, come together with me each week and uh, just to enjoy uh, the fellowship of, of God's Word. And so um, I guess it was uh, last uh, last week, I'm showing a picture here of my grandson Jackson and his, his father, uh, Garrett. We were uh, out in, in, uh, in the woods last week. We went down to Gene Rush, and, and I hadn't been there before, and, and so we had... Uh, we had walked around through the woods most of the day and uh, had uh, were looking for uh, deer sheds and just different things, just enjoying the the outdoors and the and the weather. And you know, after we'd been there for uh, an hour or two uh, and, and walking through the hills and the woods, that really I I just I just didn't know where I was. And I mean, I, as far as trying to find my way back, I, I thought, you know, if I had just to do it on my own, I, I'm not sure I could do it pretty fast, if at all. And so, you know, I was, I was sharing that with my son, and I said, you know, I'm glad you know how to get back. And him being a little bit more familiar with the area, of course, he was he was very comfortable with where he was at, but I wasn't. And, and so I, I, I share this story with you to tell you that sometimes I think that we can get uh, a little bit lost in life and just in our in the days that the things that we do on our daily basis that we can find ourselves sometimes uh, far from home and far from uh, where the path is that leads us home and I believe that uh, that God sometimes is uh, is relaying this to us to say you know uh, I desire that you come back home and uh, I, I think that this this relates a lot of ways in life and and uh, this picture here is uh, kind of a kind of a funny picture, but it shows uh, somebody that's that's really working hard and and you know I mean they're 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 doing things that uh, you know are necessary to get uh, to get their job done. It's a little bit funny, but um, I believe that we can we can get caught up in in life sometimes and uh, and forget about where we are and what what things are important. And this occurred to me this morning. I was, I was really wanting to bring a message about something else, and I began to read some other books. and And I thought, wow, you know, it's been a while since some of the, I pulled some of these books out and read, and and just began to, to just step back and get out of the mode of, of trying to research and study, and just enjoy, because, you know, we can we can work hard. We can work hard at life, and and really. And think to ourselves, we're doing all of these things because of we want to bring about a certain result, whether it's you know in, in just our everyday work, whether it's in church, uh, whatever it is, we can get to working really hard and, and forget about the thing that's most important to us. And so, um, you know, I think that uh, really when you look at Scripture, uh, over in the book of Revelation, uh, John, when he was was telling uh, uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ to the church at Ephesus, uh, the church of Ephesus, uh, Jesus spoke to them. He said, "Look," he said, uh, "I know your deeds, your hard work, and your and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate uh, wicked men." That you have tested those who claim to be apostles or not, and you have, and they have been found false. You have persevered, and you have endured hardships for my name, and you have not grown weary. So he's talking to him, and all these things are really a positive. Look, they've done all these. They, they're working hard. They're persevering. They're revealing evil. They're doing all of these things, and you would think, wow. You know, if I'm doing all this, I, I certainly must be, be pleasing my Lord. I must be pleasing Christ. But he gets down to the fourth verse, and he says this, and he says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. And I think that uh, this is really kind of an eye-opener because, uh, man, sometimes we just need to get back to, to loving our first love. I know that in, in my marriage... Uh, that you know, I can get to working hard, and I think, well, I'm doing this for us. I'm doing this for Christian. I can, 
you know, and and I can forget about what's the most important thing, and that is that relationship, and that relationship that I have with my wife, and and how I love her, and and it's funny that he wrote, and I, I don't think it's funny. It's it's not it's not uh, coincidence. He wrote this to the Ephesians because it's in the book of Ephesians that 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 uh, Paul encourages, and especially husbands, his husbands. Uh, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for them. And so, you know, we are to, to really just step back and, and just enjoy enjoy Christ, enjoy Jesus in our lives, and enjoy who he is. And, and you know, quit, quit trying to please him so much and through everything that we're doing and just step back and just love him. And uh, just come back to that. Just come back to that first love, that first love that you felt when you... When God first revealed His uh, self to you, and and you know how we we get we got so excited and we get so zealous and, and we just and we can't wait to tell others about it in that we just love Him, and that's really the encouragement today, is that we come back to that first love, and we focus again on who He is, and what He's about, and that our mind and our all of our efforts maybe come off of, of what we're doing to build these things, these kingdoms in our life, and come back and focus on Him. And so that's really uh, the message for today, is to encourage us to, to put our eyes and our, and our mind once again on, you know, the, the rock, the foundation of, of, our, of our salvation, and the love of our life, which is Jesus. And you see, as we begin to love Jesus, as we begin to focus on Him, as we begin to, to you know, put Him back in the center of our lives, then the things around us, the things that we're working so hard on, the things that we're trying to, you know, to, to manage and, and massage and everything to get everything lined up in our lives, that when we get Jesus in the middle, when we focus on Him, and, and, and Him is the person of who He is and how that He loves us, not because of what we're doing for him, and just like the Ephesians were working so hard, it's not because of what we're trying to do for him, but because that he loves us first, just because of who we are, and in turn that we're to love him back and to to nurse that relationship and to and just to focus on him and to love him and, and just lift him up. And you know, maybe there's it's just been a while when you just stopped and said, you know, Jesus. I love you. I love you not because of anything that you're doing for me, but I love you because you love me unconditionally. You love me without any regard to merit or my hard work. You just love me. And I think this picture is a perfect illustration of that, is that that's Christ, and that's us loving Him. as He's loved the church and gave Himself for it and purified us and made us pure, and, and who we are and, the, and just the beauty of that and that we love Him. So, uh, brother, sister, I just encourage you just to return to your first love. Look upon Him that has uh, given Himself for us that we might be pure and holy and uh, look upon His loveliness. And uh, thank you for being here. God bless you, my beloved. Thank you so much.